Welcome to Mystic Mice Mousery on YouTube. Today I'll be talking about cages and everything related to them. The first thing that you want to talk about with cages is the cage size itself. What's the minimum and what's the recommended? The bare minimum you can have your mouse in is for one single male, 10 gallons. For two females, it's 15 gallons. For three females, it's 20 gallons. For four females, it's 20, 40, between them, basically. Obviously, that's the bare minimum you can have them in and it's definitely not recommended. The recommended tubs and sizes is for each mouse to have 10 gallons each, starting at 40 gallons. So that means if you have one male, the best cage you can give him is a 40 gallon breeder to himself, or if you have four females, 40 gallon breeder. After that, just keep adding one mouse for every five to 10 gallons. As you go up, after you hit about 50 gallons, you should have a minimum of three mice. After you reach 80 gallons, you should have a minimum of four starting mice. Now do remember, that male mice should not be together unless you have them neutered or with African soft fur rats. So the larger cage sizes are mainly for if you have them with companions or purely females. Now the second part is tubs, tanks and cages. What's the best, what do I recommend and what would you like? The biggest benefit to a tub is it's cheap, they come in lots of sizes, and generally speaking, they do not require that much, you know, to do. Uh, I have a tub making video on YouTube if you want to check that out. Um, but it's what I personally use, but for my maternity cage, not, not maternity cages, for my bonding cages. But they're very recommended for cheap starter cages. The best to look for is 60 litres for one to two mice. Um, and work your way up from there uh, about 80 by 50 centimeters is the four mice you know keep going up there um, in general the tanks are really good for if you want a really pretty cage um, you can make them look gorgeous give them lots of enrichment make them look incredibly pretty um, I personally like to tub the tubs because they're cheaper and the glass is a bit cold so if you have very young mice in there sometimes having them in a big tank can make them much colder than you would ideally want. They're also considerably pricey. That's the big big downfall of them is that they are expensive. And then you have cages. Now, unfortunately in the USA there are very few cages that are big enough. Um, the best bet is to look on Hopping Hammy or Vanilla Ham Ham and those kind of YouTube videos or Erin Erin's Animals uh, and look for hamster cages because generally speaking there's more information on hamster cages than there is on mice cages. Your best bet is to go for the hamster cages because they are just bigger. In the UK you have a considerable larger selection of cages. Your best bet is Zooplus. Zooplus does a lot of large cheap cages that, like the Alaska cage, the Barney cage. You can get the Zoo Zone 2 and mesh the top. They also make for very good cages. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Bedding. The next kind of bedding that you want, it, the best bedding that I recommend is Aspen, Kiln Dried Pine, Wood Cat Litter that's non-clumping or hemp bedding. You can also use some other sub, sub bedding like coconut fiber or topsoil. I don't use that as much. Um, but the one bedding that you should not use 100% for is um, Carefresh. The reason that you can't use Carefresh is it basically does nothing for ammonia. There were tests on it to see on how well or how well they don't deal with ammonia and Carefresh was discontinued after two weeks of use because it was not good enough. Personally, if you really want to use Carefresh, to only use it in dig boxes, where they're like big boxes that you can just fill with substrate for them to dig around in, or to use them for nesting material, but do not use it for the majority of your cage. 
The best things for cat, uh, the ammonia and the smell I've personally noticed is the wood cat litter. My favourite brands are the Snowflake wood cat litter. They also do the kiln dried pine, which I also really like, or the Pets at Home specific brand. In America, I know there's a couple of horse companies who do wood cat, well, it's not necessarily wood cat litter, but it's pelleted wood. Um, if you are wanting to use one of that, I would actually suggest joining a American-based mouse group and asking opinions on which brands to use, because some aren't kiln dried. If you're in the UK, uh, I've physically phoned up Pets at Home. All of their wood products are kiln dried. I still would not use cedar. I do not think that they sell it, but cedar is a massive no. Never use cedar. Doesn't matter if it's processed or not. The next part is about cleaning your cages. How often do I clean? I, I have a lot of people asking. I clean every day. Should I do more? Should I do less? My mice still stink. The best thing to do when your mice are really, really stinky is to look at the cage size. Is your cage big enough? Is it too small? Are they not using the correct bedding? Do you have them on paper bedding? Those kind of questions. If you find the cage is too small or you are using purely paper bedding and your mouse is not allergic to any other bedding, switch to a larger cage with the correct bedding. That is the first thing that the smell will do better. After that, do not clean every day or every other day. You are just going to stress your mice out more. They are going to pee more. It's going to stink more. <laughs> you know, normal stuff. My mice are now all trying to drink the water bottle all at the same time. So if you hear their wonderful clicking, I can't help it because I have four separate mice drinking a water bottle right now because they just love me like that. <laughs> So what you want to be doing at the bare minimum, the, the shortest period of time that you can leave cage cleanings is five to six days. Do not do a full clay, cage clean out any sooner than that, you will just stress them out. When you do a clean out, I suggest leaving about a third to a quarter of their old bedding in there before giving them fresh stuff and then every couple of months or so, give them a complete cage clean out, but leave all their toys that were in there, in there, do not clean the toys. And then what I would do is when you move the bedding out, when their bedding is kind of semi-used, you know, be maybe a week, half a week before you've cleaned out the bedding, clean the toys out, and that might just be a quick scrubbing, a bit brush down, a hoover over where they've pooed, something like that to just get rid of the worst of the smell and then a couple of days later or a week later then clean out the bedding. You don't want everything cleaned at the same time, they will just get stressed out. Enrichment toys and all that fun stuff. How much enrichment does your mouse need? And all those nice lovely questions that I always get. Mice should have, at a bare minimum, one climbing toy one tube and one bed each. That's the bare minimum that you should have in there. If you cannot fit in a tube, a climbing toy and a bed all at the same time, then you are not giving them enough. There needs to be more space, there needs to be more stuff. After that, it's basically just as much as you can fit in there. Uh, in the cage, you know, the cage that I'm showing is actually really bare in sense of enrichment. Uh, none of my breeding mice have the best amount of enrichment, mainly because their enrichment involves um, same-sex parties or opposite-sex parties, whatever floats the mouse's boat at the time. But ignoring the fact that my mice like to hump each other, you should be aiming for more than what I show. I will always suggest if somebody buys my mice, more than what I provide. You want bigger cages, you want more enrichment, you want more to do. You always want a wheel. Bare minimum wheels are six inches for saucers and nine to 12 inches standing wheels. If you want cheap DIY toys, the best things that I suggest is if you live in the UK, if you go to Poundland, 
they do this willow branch fencing thing it looks absolute terrible <laughs> really bad really really bad you wouldn't ever use it in your garden but it is completely safe for your mice to use as well as rabbits and chinchillas I've again phoned them up confirmed that it is safe I like to use these in many different ways a couple of mine just have a hook attached and I hang them up somewhere the mice get to climb on it they get enrichment from chewing it and in general it's just something dirt cheap the roll is a pound you get a full meter of it have fun uh, another thing that I suggest is if you've got a cage or a tube buying some washers some bolts and screws and that kind of thing and just attaching random things like toilet tubes to the side of the tub the side of the cage it can make a massive difference in enrichment another thing to do is getting more platforms mice love platforms anything that hangs that's higher up that they have to jump to keep their mind going keep them fit you want them to be moving as much as you can uh, mice shouldn't be lazy they shouldn't be just sitting there not looking like they're having fun and downstairs which I'll do another cleaning video on at some point it might be in our current cleaning video at the start that is what I would recommend for four female mice or one male mouse that cage is more enriched it has the more accurate enrichment in there obviously uh, it's my both a display cage and it's for bonding female mice before they go to new homes so it needs to have lots and lots of enrichment so that they don't concentrate on bullying each other but those kind of cages is what i suggest more than you know the current cage that i'm showing but thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss an, another video offers and i will see you hoppers next time